Picture this. It was a crisp autumn afternoon, the air tinged with the earthy scent of fallen leaves, and the radio crackling with anticipation. You were nestled in the cozy confines of your living room, perhaps surrounded by friends or wrapped in the solitude of your thoughts. And then it happened. The opening chords of Alice's restaurant massacre filled the room, and Arlo Guthrie's unmistakable voice began to narrate a story that would forever etch itself into your memory. That first encounter with the 1969 movie, Alice's Restaurant, was like opening a door to a world where counterculture met a potent dose of satire. It was a tale of a Thanksgiving like no other, where littering led to an unforgettable adventure, weaving humor and a touch of rebellion into the very fabric of tradition. As you watched, you couldn't help but chuckle at the absurdity of it all and nod along with the subversive spirit that Guthrie so masterfully portrayed. Memorable moments from the film danced through your mind, like the church scene where Arlo's congregation, despite their righteous intentions, couldn't resist the urge to hum along to Alice's restaurant massacre. Or the comical absurdity of the draft board examination, a sequence that had you laughing and pondering the senselessness of bureaucracy simultaneously. But there was more to this film than just laughs. It was a mirror to a generation's ethos, a reflection of a time when questioning authority and challenging the status quo became a way of life. As we journey back to those iconic moments in the hidden gems of Alice's restaurant, let's uncover some intriguing and lesser known facts about this classic that continues to inspire and entertain to this day. It's a story that transcends time, an anthem of rebellion, and a Thanksgiving tradition of its own. So, without further ado, let's dive into the rabbit hole of random facts about Alice's Restaurant, shall we? In the 1969 movie Alice's Restaurant, several interesting details stand out. One notable aspect is the appearance of the real Alice Brock and Ray Brock as extras in the film. In one scene, Ray can be seen putting up insulation while wearing a brown turtleneck and sporting a ponytail. During the Thanksgiving scene, she opts for a bright pink satin blouse, and in the party scene, she dons a Western-style dress. These appearances added an authentic touch to the movie, allowing the real-life figures to step into the cinematic world. Another noteworthy aspect is that Alice's restaurant marked the film debut of Patricia Quinn, Pete Seeger, and Tina Chen. Their introduction to the world of film through this production contributed to the movie's appeal and significance in the world of cinema. Interestingly, the real Alice Brock declined the opportunity to play herself in the film. Despite being intimately connected to the story and setting of the movie, she chose not to step into the role, citing her lack of experience as a professional actress. She believed that there was no need to recreate on film what she had already lived in real life. This decision added an intriguing layer to the movie's production, showcasing the complexity of personal and cinematic storytelling. In summary, Alice's Restaurant is not just a film but a canvas that blends reality and fiction. The presence of the real Alice Brock and Ray Brock, the debut of talented actors, and Alice's decision to stay behind the scenes all contribute to the unique charm of this 1969 classic. In the 1969 movie Alice's Restaurant, directed by Arthur Penn, the song Alice's Restaurant by Arlo Guthrie plays a central role. This song is as long as the 18 minutes and 34 seconds of tape erased from President Richard M. Nixon's Watergate tapes. This curious coincidence has added to the legend of the film and the song. While many initially thought Arlo Guthrie's recording of the Alice's Restaurant Massacre was fictional, it was, in fact, based on real events that took place in Stockbridge, where the story is set. Arthur Penn, who owned a home in Stockbridge, realized this and ensured that the movie portrayed actual photos used as evidence during the trial. In an interesting twist, the blind judge mentioned in Guthrie's song, Judge James Hannon, actually played himself, James Hannon, in the film. Furthermore, Arlo Guthrie's co-defendant in the littering incident, which is a central part of the movie's plot, was a local 19-year-old named Richard Rhodes. Guthrie himself was 18 at the time. This fact adds a layer of authenticity to the film's portrayal of events. In conclusion, Alice's Restaurant is not just a movie but a reflection of real events, making it an intriguing blend of fact and fiction. The connection between the length of the song and the erased Watergate tapes adds a unique dimension to its legacy. In the 1969 movie Alice's Restaurant, Arlo Guthrie's costume in the party scene was inspired by the King of Cups from a tarot card deck. 
This unique choice added depth to his character and reflected the film's countercultural themes. Additionally, an interesting anecdote from the making of the film involves the character Officer Obi. It turns out that the real Stockbridge Sheriff, William Obanine, discovered that the character was modeled after him. In a surprising move, Sheriff Obanine demanded to play the role himself, saying, If anyone is going to make a fool out of me, it might as well be me. This decision added a humorous twist to the film and showcased the sheriff's sense of humor. Lastly, Tina Chen, who portrayed Arlo Guthrie's on-screen girlfriend, wore an authentic Chinese dress that had been passed down from her grandmother. However, when the film wrapped up, the dress was stored away by the film crew, and she never got it back. This story highlights the sentimental value and cultural significance of the dress. These intriguing behind-the-scenes tidbits shed light on the creative choices, and memorable moments associated with the making of Alice's Restaurant. They offer a glimpse into the film's production and the personal connections of its cast and crew. The 1969 movie Alice's Restaurant marked the film debut of Patricia Quinn, Pete Seeger, and Tina Chen. This film, directed by Arthur Penn, is known for its countercultural themes and connection to Arlo Guthrie's song Alice's Restaurant Massacre. Additionally, it's worth noting that Arlo Guthrie, the star of the film, had a real-life connection to the events depicted. He and his co-defendant in the littering incident were both young at the time, with his co-defendant being a local 19-year-old named Richard Rhodes. Guthrie was 18 when the incident occurred. These details add to the historical significance of the movie, which captured the spirit of the late 1960s counterculture and the anti-establishment sentiments of the era. In the 1969 movie Alice's Restaurant, Tina Chen, who portrayed Arlo Guthrie's on-screen girlfriend, wore a genuine Chinese dress passed down from her grandmother. When filming concluded, the crew stored the dress, but Tina Chen never got it back. This film is known for its connection to the song Alice's Restaurant, which is as long as the 18 minutes and 34 seconds of tape that was erased from the President Richard M. Nixon Watergate tapes. In a notable cameo, the real Alice Brock and Ray Brock appear as extras in the movie. Ray is seen wearing a brown turtleneck and a ponytail while putting up insulation. In the Thanksgiving scene, she sports a bright pink satin blouse, and in the party scene, she wears a Western-style dress. These intriguing details add depth to the behind-the-scenes stories of Alice's restaurant, making it a film with not just a memorable storyline, but also fascinating tidbits about its making. Living with Purpose, Alice's Restaurant's cast member's journey as a chronic disease advocate in Hollywood in the wake of the 1969 movie Alice's Restaurant. One cast member embarked on a remarkable journey of resilience and advocacy within the confines of Hollywood. This individual's life took an unexpected turn as they faced the challenges of living with a chronic disease. As Hollywood basked in the success of Alice's Restaurant, this cast member's personal life was marred by a diagnosis that would change their path forever. Amidst the glitz and glamour of the entertainment industry, they grappled with the harsh reality of a chronic illness. Despite the odds stacked against them, they chose not to let this setback define their life. This cast member's transformation from a thriving actor to a passionate advocate for chronic disease awareness was nothing short of inspiring. They used their platform and influence to raise awareness about their condition and help others facing similar struggles. Their journey was marked by perseverance and a relentless commitment to making a difference. Through their efforts, they not only shed light on the challenges faced by those with chronic diseases in Hollywood, but also became a symbol of hope for many. In a world where success is often measured by fame and fortune, this cast member showed that true purpose can be found in fighting for a cause larger than oneself. Their story serves as a testament to the power of resilience and the impact one individual can have in raising awareness and making a change. In the annals of Hollywood history, this cast member's journey from diagnosis to advocacy is a story of courage, determination, and the enduring human spirit. Their legacy continues to inspire and remind us that even in the face of adversity, one can live with purpose. The divided set, feuds and clashes among cast members of Alice's Restaurant in 1969. The film Alice's Restaurant hit the screens, bringing to life the counterculture spirit of the era. While the movie is remembered for its social commentary and memorable soundtrack, 
Behind the scenes, tensions and conflicts among cast members simmered, affecting the dynamics of the project. The ensemble cast, including Arlo Guthrie, Patricia Quinn, and James Broderick, faced their fair share of clashes and animosity during production. The backdrop of the film, set against the backdrop of the Vietnam War, and social change only heightened the intensity of emotions on set. Arlo Guthrie, who played himself in the film, was a central figure in the real-life Alice's restaurant story. However, his clashes with other cast members, particularly Patricia Quinn, who portrayed Alice, were palpable. They disagreed on the interpretation of their characters and often clashed over creative decisions. James Broderick, who played a crucial role as Ray Brock, found himself caught in the crossfire of these conflicts. Broderick's attempts to mediate and keep the peace added a layer of tension to the production. These conflicts didn't go unnoticed by the director, Arthur Penn, who struggled to maintain harmony on set. The feuds and clashes among the cast members undoubtedly impacted the chemistry on screen. While the film's storyline revolved around the counterculture movement's ideals of peace and harmony, the behind-the-scenes drama painted a different picture. Despite these tensions, Alice's Restaurant remains a classic of its time, capturing the spirit of the late 60 seconds. The film's enduring appeal lies in its portrayal of a turbulent period in American history, even if the cast had their own struggles to contend with. In the end, Alice's Restaurant stands as a testament to the challenges of creating art during a period of social upheaval, with the divided set reflecting the broader divisions of the era. As we bid adieu to this journey down memory lane, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on the indelible imprint left by the 1969 cinematic gem, Alice's Restaurant. This film, a tapestry of counterculture and rebellion, has woven itself into the fabric of our collective consciousness, resonating with each of us in unique and profound ways. Perhaps you recall the first time you encountered Arlo Guthrie's whimsical ballad, or the laughter and camaraderie shared with friends during a viewing. Maybe it ignited a spark of nostalgia, transporting you to a time when the world seemed both simpler and more complex. Or it could have been the soundtrack to a pivotal moment in your life, a backdrop to the emotions and choices that shaped your journey. Whatever your personal connection to Alice's Restaurant, we invite you to share your cherished memories, musings, or insights. Let your words join the chorus of voices that celebrate the enduring impact of this iconic film. Your story, your perspective, is an integral thread in the rich tapestry of its legacy. Thank you for taking this moment to reflect with us. Your presence here is a testament to the lasting power of art and storytelling. And with that, we conclude our journey together. Until we meet again, remember that the stories that touch our hearts are the ones that bind us, transcending time and place. Warmly, 